Happy New Year. Hey, how you doing, man? Happy New Year. Hola. Hola, senorita. Back up, Wesley. So I've got three minutes off, so my phone's I don't think Be careful. Yeah, these yeah, I was hoping Santa would bring bigger chairs this Christmas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Stuff a little higher. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 This is uh, this is not school that. Right. So that's the only thing that's there. Right. I wish I have it on the spreadsheet. Yeah. Well, should we check the doors or the front? Okay. All right, very good. Well, welcome everybody to the Town of Henrietta Planning, uh, Henrietta's Planning Board Workshop Meeting for Tuesday, January 18th, 2022. Uh, before we formally get started, I want to, uh, on behalf of the board, officially welcome Mr. Rob Barley to the Planning Board. Thank you. Happy to Glad here. to be here. Look forward to working with you. So congratulations. Thank you. 
Members present this evening uh, Matt Borkowski, Patricia Brill, Robert Farley, Craig Ecker, Walter Liss, Steve McIntyre, on staff, Chris Clark, Director of Planning and Engineering, and Chris Hauser, Deputy Director of Planning and Engineering. First item on the agenda this evening will be the minutes from the December 14th, 2021 meeting. Any comments on the minutes? Sure, we'll entertain a motion. Abstain. Abstain. Patty, you're staying. Second, please. Second. Director, thank you. Patty, you're Okay, so all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Abstain. abstain. All abstain. Two. Right. Two. So you're abstaining also, or okay. So one, three, four, and three, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good thing we didn't have one more. <laughs> okay. First application this evening is uh, 21 010 Old Dominion Freight Line Facility Expansion. The final site plan approval of a 7,128 square foot building addition to the existing building located at 15 Transport Drive in an industrial district with a mixed use redevelopment area overlay district. May I ask who's here representing the applicant this evening, please? Anybody with old dominion this evening? Mr. Donnelly, is that you, sir? Yes, my name is Andrew Donnelly. I'm the uh, project architect. Thank you. And uh, Dean Apostolaris just joined the meeting. He's with the uh, the civil engineer. Hey, good evening. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. The second party that joined, your name, please. Can you Hi. repeat your name, please? Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dean Apostolaris. Would you like me to spell that? Yes, I would. Thank you. Okay, perfect. A P O S T O L E R I S. First name Dean. Dean D E A N. Thank you. Is that you. right, Dean? That's what I have on your video. Thank you. That's it. Okay, well, gentlemen, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, well, good evening to the members of the planning board here. Um, I appreciate your time in hearing our presentation this evening. Uh, we are here to present on behalf of Old Dominion Freight Lines for a facility expansion at 15 Transport Drive. Um, the plan proposes a dock addition of approximately 7,000 square feet um, to an existing about 9,000 approximate square foot dock, um, an existing office. Um, with that dock, we plan to install dock doors on both the north and south side of the, of the dock addition. Um, in addition to that building expansion, we are also proposing some very minor site improvements, uh, which include expansion of the existing parking to the eastern area of the site, as well as some striping um, across the whole of the site to, uh, to just redo the striping there and also incorporating uh, stormwater and compensatory flood storage. Um, so Andy, would you like to describe the general use and facility nature of how things will be operating there with the building? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, typically a crosstalk warehouse has uh, uh, just loading dock doors to it. Um, it's not really a true warehouse where they store materials. Um, the materials usually just come off of one trailer, uh, kind of get staged in the middle of the dock, and then they, as they load it and unload it um, to other trailers around the dock. Um, the existing facility does have a three-story office component to it um, that's in the front. Uh, we're not planning on modifying that or adding to that. Uh, we're just going to add on to the existing architecture and extend the existing roof, uh, existing door configuration, existing floor that's elevated above grade at four feet. Um, so the architecture will be pretty much the same. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you, Andy. Um, I just wanted to give a couple more clarifying items. I know you guys have the plans probably there and had a chance to review things, um, but I just wanted to give a couple of numeric items here. So the entire site area is approximately um, six acres and our limits of disturbance are primarily confined to the eastern portion of the site to expand that parking area and include uh, storage for the stormwater runoff that will be increased due to the addition of the impervious area. Um, as well as providing, as I stated before, some compensatory flood volume for the volume that we are displacing for the proposed dock addition. Um, so with that, um, we, can, we can open things up for questions, or if you'd like us to describe any of the more specific portions of our design, we'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Uh, have you both uh, seen the comments from the town engineer? Yes, I received those this morning um, and have reviewed them briefly. Okay, any deal breakers in there from your perspective? Um, I don't believe so. I did have uh, a question on one of them specifically, which I can wait to ask unless you'd like for me to ask now. Yeah, well, uh, you want it now, Patty? Yeah. I okay, sure. So. Yep, go ahead. Um, so the question was in regards to the archaeological sensitive area. So we... We had done a CRIS um, just um, on the on the resource mapper there, and we had determined that this was in an archaeological sensitive zone. Um, I know you had a comment there relating to doing a, an uh, archaeological assessment. I was curious if um, applying just for a SHPO designation and getting um, a negative designation from them would be sufficient for this for this item. Thing. There, I'm going to try that again with the mic on. <laughs> so again, Chris Martin. Um, yes, that hey, would be Chris. fine. Yep. Okay, as long great. As, um, you know, we have something from, um, you know, SHPO, a letter saying everything's fine. That's that's okay with us. Just when you do get it, just send it to us so that we'll have it for our records. Okay, not a problem. We can do that. Okay, well, the chair will recognize Mr. Eckert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Um, I don't really, I mean, this is a good fit for this location. I'm really actually, um, I guess we're probably, you know, I'll speak on behalf, but I'm pleased that this is going into a reuse site. Um, I, you're obviously aware, I mean, this site does flood from time to time. Um, are you familiar with some of the site characteristics that are out there now? Yes, I am. Um, we are aware that the site does flood um, and uh, we are aware of uh, the flood levels in the area and the nature of the soils in the area. Um, so, yes. So I see the additional parking lot, but I don't really see any change in grade. So that's not going to affect a whole lot. And you're taking over the northwest corner parking lot, too. Is that part of the property or that's uh, that stuff separately? Yeah. Yep, that is part of the property. Um, we're not doing any changes to that portion except for just a small uh, median within that drive entrance there. That parking lot will serve as a uh, strictly employee parking lot. Um, all we plan to do there with that is uh, to restripe and uh, mill and overlay to, uh, to restore the pavement. Yeah. So no plans for grading at all. Okay, I reviewed um, some of the conservation board's comments as well. Um, you know, as far as plantings, it's you know completely industrial commercial zone, and you know anything would be beneficial. But certainly, I don't know as if we require that from any of the other tenants that are back there and uh, and lighting. So my only suggestion would be the same: is if the tenant feels that there's any consideration to land bank anything for now, if you need all that parking. Um, that's fine. If you feel as though it's uh, not necessary, at least off the beginning, it might be beneficial to hold off on, you know, paving the whole thing until you find out that you need it. But that would be an only other benefit to the flood storage and et cetera to that property. Um, other than that, again, I like it. It's a good fit. And I don't have any other comments, sir. Thank you, Mr. Record. Thank you. Chair, we'll recognize Mr. Borkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Well, when we do this stuff, um, my two primary things are neighbors and aesthetics. Um, we don't have to worry about neighbors. I concur with Mr. Eckert. This is a great usage for this area. Um, aesthetics, you know, we don't want something to look awful, but your, your renderings are okay. Uh, usually we like to see samples of the materials. 
Uh, but in this instance, I think that it's going to net improve the location either way. And uh, because we don't have any issues with neighbors, I think I'm good on this one, Mr. Chairman. Thank good. you. Thank you, Mr. Borkowski. Chair, we'll recognize Mr. Liss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I really have nothing. I'm, I'm in full agreement with the, with the plan. Thank hey, you. Very good. Chair, we'll recognize Mr. McIntyre. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Um, are there going to be, is there going to be a fuel station added to this uh, site? So I, I wanted to clarify, because I, I noticed that was an item in the comments as well. Um, and I want to just double check the plan here for exactly. Yeah, we do, we do call it a fuel station on the plan here. I think that is misrepresentative of what actually that area there is for. Um, there will be no fueling per se of any vehicles going on here. What that area is for is it will include um, a DEF additive station for trucks to pull up and add that additive to the diesel fuel. Um, we, if, if someone isn't familiar with what that is, um, please speak up and I can give us a, a brief explanation. But um, that's primarily what that is used for. Um, it's an above ground storage tank. Uh, we included values of that volume of storage in the EAF. Um, I can pull those numbers if, if we'd like to discuss that now. But again, it's an above ground storage tank. It'll be housed in a small container above ground. And the DEF is just a, a, an additive that is used very commonly for diesel fuel. Um, also as a part of this, a uh, small station here will just be a, uh, a hose bib for, for vehicles to be able to wash, wash down. Um, and then I believe there will be just some other general cleaning products housed in a container on there. So um, I would just like to make it clear that I, that I think us calling a fuel station here it might be a little bit misrepresentative. So I understand where a misunderstanding could come from. So the additive will be fully contained and you'll have proper permits that is correct. Okay. Um, I understand the for the colors and materials they'll match the existing structure. Yes, that is correct. I believe so, Andy. You want to speak up on that one? And you said you did have a chance to review the uh, comments um, under B twelve. Uh, there was a recommendation to change some of the asphalt to town. I think uh, one of our mm. I think Craig also touched on this. Is that, is that possible? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we had, we had uh, went over a, a similar comment as we previously stated during the conservation board hearing where I believe they had requested, uh, we, we, um, we provide a 25% green space on the site there. Uh, one of the conservation board members had cited that we were only using 21 percent. Um, I'm not entirely sure how that calculation was arrived at, but we actually did a calculation ourselves based on CAD files that we have here, which can render a pretty accurate calculation. Um, and we actually determined that we are nearly 26, I believe 26.4 percent green space on the site currently. Um, and we can absolutely add that to the bulk table on the site plan sheet. Um, but I just did want to mention that prior to answering your question. If, if you would like for us to add more green space to the site, um, that's something we can discuss. However, we are currently pretty constrained on the site here as it is. Um, we may be able to have an opportunity to um, use a few of the parking stalls up in that employee parking area to, uh, to, to modify and make into some green space. But um, in terms of the trucking area and the circulation of the site, we are very tight. Um, I think reducing any area along the perimeter of the site, aside from that parking area towards the Northwest um, may pose as a detriment to any truck circulation. I think one of the reasons why it's so attractive is that it kind of adds to the impervious surfaces uh, so that you have less runoff. Right. That's fall parking lot. So it's, if it's doable, it's nice. Even if you're at 26% green space, uh, even more is, is helpful uh, as far as the runoff. Um, basing on that, did you provide the um, stormwater calculations to the town? Yes, we did. We included a, a full stormwater pollution prevention plan, which includes all stormwater calculations. You're good, Chris. It's in the process right now being reviewed by our consultant, and any comments that we have will pass on to um, 
Dean. Okay, very good. I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. <clears throat> Chair will recognize Mrs. Brill. Thank you. Um, a couple of my comments have been addressed. The only last one is confirming that the existing lights will be converted over to LED and matching the proposing the proposed lighting. Can you confirm that? Um, <clears throat> we can definitely get an answer on that. I want to pull up here just um, our lighting plan to see what our lighting consultant has shown for this. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing a designation of LED here. So is that something that you guys would like to see as a requirement for this site plan? Uh, again, Dean, this is Chris Martin. Um, I think what we want to see is what other lights you have now are going to match. So we don't want to see some that are LED and others that are high pressure sodium. We want to have it one or the other. So if you're going to, the new lights are going to be LEDs, then we would like to see the old lights change to um, LEDs as well. But if you want to keep the high pressure sodium, um, then the new lights will have to be that. We just, like I said, we don't want to see a mismatch. Understood. Okay. If I may ask, as opposed to high pressure sodium, in the end, would we prefer that they be LED? Yeah, I mean, certainly the LEDs are a little more expensive, but again, they're cost more cost effective and you get a better light. So, I mean, obviously, if we had a choice between the two, I think we'd rather see LED, but it's really more of a preference to um, what the developer or the um, applicant wants. We're not telling you they have to be LED, um, but we just, like I said, want the lights to match. This Understood. is Andy Donnelly. Um, when Old Dominion usually comes into a property and renovates it, they typically will retrofit all of the interior and exterior light fixtures to be LED. So in the end, um, all of the site lighting will be uh, new LED throughout the site. Thank you. I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Brill. Mr. Barley, we left the tough questions for you, my friend. Good luck. Well, most of the things have been answered um, that I was looking at. Um, but number four, on elevation on the uh, floodplain, I think... Well, it looks like our code is two feet. And I think I heard Dean say they're going to do four feet, right? That is correct. Why is that? Uh, to match the existing finished floor right. of, the, of the dock there. Does that help any with the floodplain as well? But or um, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't just to match. that question. You're just doing it to match? Okay. Yeah, just to match. For number 16, um, says here that we should have a template of the turning radius for our fire trucks for access. Yep, we can put that together. Um, should we work with the fire official to determine the necessary dimensions for the fire trucks that the town there uses? Yeah, Dean, again, this is Chris Meyer and I can answer that for you. Um, yes, we will send you the, um, the template that the fire marshal uses and then you can just use that um for the i mean i'm gonna guess if you can get a, a wb50 to, or 65 to move around the site you'd be able to get one of our fire trucks but we just like to see the the drawings for it that's all yeah not a problem we can we can do that last thing i'll just say thanks for number 16 for addressing the uh ecological uh, sensitivity and asking about the shipo i'm done mr chairman thank you mr barley any other questions or comments from the board before we move into seeker? Just one, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Borkowski. On um, G, it says that we should uh, stipulate a letter of credit. So mm -hmm. do we make that conditional on any kind of approval? That 10%. You, um, it, you, it's going to be required. And so there's no reason to not put it in there. Okay. Right. And Dean, that's something that you'll work with the engineering department on. Um, we can send you some examples of, you know, of, of ones that we've done for similar type projects. Okay, that sounds good, thank you. Okay, very good. Dean, any further comments from, from uh, your team there? 
Um, I just was curious actually on section F question number three. Um, you guys outlined that a stormwater maintenance agreement will be required for this project. This agreement will need to be signed and filed with the Monroe County Clerk's Office prior to the Planning Board Chairman signing off on the drawings. Um, I would just like for maybe someone to provide a little bit more detail into what that is asking for entirely. Um, I know stormwater maintenance agreements can be different from jurisdiction to jurisdiction and from county to county. Um, does the Monroe County Clerk's Office publish uh, what they may require for that sort of an agreement? No, and again, Chris Martin, uh, we have a template, Dean, that we can give you. Um, it's basically fill in the blanks. And um, so the Monroe County, typically it's, if you're familiar with the New York State DEC one, we're just like that, except for some slight modifications. Um, but we'll send that to you to have your client fill out and complete. And then you send it back to us with the filing fees. And then we have that filed in the Monroe County Clerk's Office. So, I mean, typically, you know, we can have some leeway in there, but we do like to see those signed near the beginning of the project. If they go to the end, a lot of times they just don't get signed or, or we have to track them down. So we're trying to take a little more proactive approach on that, but we'll send you the revised template or the, the new template rather. Great. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate that. That's all from me. I don't have anything further. Andy, is there anything further you'd like to add? Mr. Record? Yes, sir. Yes, nothing for me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have one quick question. Chris, I heard about I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing. Yep, that's because the microphone's off. Um, sorry, quick question just for Chris Martin. More than anything, in our discussions, we talked about a truck wash or a hose bib to hose the trucks off. Does that not require an oil water separator? Dean, can you give us a little more information on that? Are the trucks going to be washed outside? Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily like a truck wash, um, like a, a large, um, you know, washing sort of sort of an act going on there. It's it's more of just a hose bib for you know possibly washing off just a small portion of the car. You know, just just to have just to have some water out there at that area. It's not necessarily you know trucks are coming through and being scrubbed and washed with soap nothing like that, um, just to be able to have a, a point of water right there at that, at that station. Is all this water going to drain to the stormwater management facility? That would be the plan, yes. Uh, it, there's no other stormwater infrastructure on this parking lot, right? There currently are two existing storm structures towards the, um, towards the middle of the site there. Dean, why don't we do this? Can you show us our, in, in future plans, can you show where this area might be and uh, let us do a little research? Because a lot of times what we'll do like in a town facility where we have something kind of similar to that, we'll put like an oversized catch basin or, or something like that. So when the sediment comes off the truck, it's got some place to collect into that can be cleaned out. Um, but I like to do a little more research on this. We don't really get too many of these um, so I like to do our due diligence. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, if it's just a small hose bib, I don't think it's, I don't know if it meets the criteria. I don't know what our criteria is. Yeah. But at least, can you at least show us on the plans where you're going to put it? And then, um, the hose bibs going on the Southwest side there, that there's a, a communications conduit and a hose bib going out to that new, uh, I don't know what you call it Island on the South end. Yeah. So on the plan, if you look on sheet, C300, um, we have a small inset towards the bottom of the plan there. Um, and we actually call out the, fro the frost proof hose bib. It's right towards the top right corner of that, of that curved station there. Am I pointing at the right thing? Yes, and I, and I can share my screen if, if if right. you'd like, I have a more zoomed in version, but yes, that's correct. That's where that's going there. I just grabbed your application quickly from. Where are you pointing, Greg? Right there? Yeah. There's a, in the utility plan, there was a CATV kind of, I think, or a communications conduit and a, a water line going to a hose bib. So I just, just, the only two catch basins are, I believe, here. 
Yeah, there's no other storm sewer, but so if it's draining to the pond, then that's great. You know, it's meant to go there. If even if it went to a catch basin, hopefully it would go to a sedimentation or an oil water separator, and then it would go the water would drain, then they could clean out the oil water separator. But again, if it's just a, a small line with a hose bib, I don't know. I don't know what our criteria is. I didn't pick up on uh, a truck wash until it was mentioned. Right. Yeah, it's just a small line with a hose bib, similar to what you'd see on like the side of a of a residential home, um, something very small like that. So if it meets our criteria, then Chris can, I'm sure, take care of that internally. That's I, don't think. I was okay. just concerned about if it is truly being used to wash off, you know, excessive amounts of salt on a regular basis, if that is draining into you know, not going through any kind of filtration. Um, you know, that's another um, area where more impervious area would be preferred because it would filter some of that salt and sediment prior to it getting into the water. It appears as though the water flows into, I mean, I don't know about the whole parking lot, but into this detention compensatory flood area that they have, which is the first property I think that I'm aware of on this road that has any kind of stormwater uh, benefit. Nothing else has been really developed down there, I think, since the Clean Water Act. Right? I mean, Correct. Yeah, I'm glad that industrial park was built back in the, the 70s or 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. So let us do this, Dean. We'll, we'll take a look at it now that we know where it's going. Um, and if we need um, anything in addition, we'll let you know. How's that? Okay. Okay, hey, anything else from the board? We'll move into seeker. Seeker review indicates the action under consideration is an unlisted action as per section 617.7 C1VIII. The Henrietta Planning Board as lead agency has determined that the proposed action described below will not have a significant effect on the environment and that a draft environmental impact statement will not be required. The action under consideration is a site plan application by Old Dominion Freight Line Incorporated. It is an unlisted action and will not require a conditioned negative declaration. The purpose of this application is for final site plan approval of a 7,128 square foot building addition to the existing building located at 15 Transport Drive in an industrial zone district with a mixed use redevelopment area overlay district. All relevant areas of environmental concern were identified Evaluation and examination were carefully made in relation of the existing conditions versus the proposed site improvements. It has been determined that there will be no adverse environmental effect as a result of the proposed action. I, James Gruner, therefore make the motion that we make a negative declaration and that the chairman be authorized to sign the statement of environmental significance. Do I have a significant sec or sufficient second, please? Second. Mr. McIntyre, thank you. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The opinion of the chair of the ayes have it. We have seeker. <laughs> chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, <clears throat> present a motion to approve the project. Thank you, Mr. Eckert. Do I have a sufficient second, please? I'll second. Mr. Borkowski. Thank you. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The opinion of the chairs, the uh, chair, the ayes have it. The motion carries. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate the time on this. Thank you very much, guys. You're welcome. Okay, next item on the agenda this evening, application number 21-017. It's a dish wireless co-location at 5200 West Henrietta Road for final site plan approval for the installation of a disc wireless antenna on the existing tower located at 5200 West Henrietta Road in a commercial B1 zoned district. <clears throat> and who is here representing the applicant, please? Hello, uh, my name is Melanie Dorn. I'm uh, calling from Tilson representing DISH. Good evening, Your welcome. Name, please, Melanie. Yep, it's D-O-R-N. Dorn. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Money, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi. Um, well, thanks for having me. Um, Mel, and... me one, one thing. I'm sorry. 
you've got three, uh, three applications here tonight. Um, what you're going to tell us right now, does this narrative kind of apply to all three of them? Because there um, so would be major changes between the three. So I'm actually representing two of the applications. I believe Daryl is representing the third, the second dish application. Okay, fair enough then. We'll just deal with them one at a time. <laughs> um, the two that I have are like very similar in scope. Uh, it's 21-017 and 21-019. Um, but I can address them separately if that is better. Um, so well, what, the, what we can do is we'll listen to your narrative now, and then we can just kind of skip over that when we get to 2019 then and go right into the questions if you're okay with that. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. Um, so this site is at 5200 West Henrietta Road. Um, it's owned by PTI, Phoenix Towers, uh, and Dish Wireless um, is proposing to add three antennas, uh, one, one per sector on the existing tower. Uh, and this is within the B2 district. Um, so the tower itself is already permitted and meets the height uh, and setback uh, standards outlined in the ordinance. Um, so DISH will be adding the three antennas uh, and also an equipment platform within the existing uh, site uh, fenced in base station of the tower. Um, so it won't be substantially expanding on the footprint or anything of the tower, um, just adding three more antennas for DISH's new wireless service. And I did receive the comments uh, from the planning board um, if we wanted to discuss them now uh, and they all look like things that I can totally address. Uh, though I did have one question, if now's a good time to ask that. Certainly. Um, so it looked like uh, we need to provide a bond, which makes sense. Uh, and then there was also a requirement of a letter of credit. And I wasn't sure if the bond would cover a letter of credit or if that's totally separate things that you need. And again, this is uh, Chris Martin, Director of Engineering and Planning. Um, typically for the co-locators, you know, we might be able to uh, waive the um, letter of credit because it's pretty straightforward. Um, so we'll probably just be looking for the surety bond. Okay. Unless there's um, something unusual, but in this case, I don't think there is. So I, I may waive my comment um, for the um, letter of credit. But that's something okay. to get a little more in detail. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that about covers the scope. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, yep, thank you. Chair will recognize Mr. Liss. I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Liss. The chair will recognize Mr. McIntyre. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Uh, I've only got really one concern is there was a memo from Tower Engineering Professionals. Did you see that memo? Um, I'm not sure where, where was it from? Dated March 25th, 2021. Basically they took, to look, they took a look at the tower capability. And what it says is that by adding what's on, what, what there is there now in the superstructure and what you're adding to it, it'll have sufficient capacity, but anything additionally added to that tower will be now insufficient. The superstructure won't uh, be able to handle it. I guess that's what it means. Is that part of the structural analysis report, Steve? Yes. So I believe, I'm sorry, does that mean that the equipment you put in, you have to be very careful that it's exactly what you've mentioned in the uh, menu and you can't deviate from that and put any additional antennas on? I think it would more cover um, any like additional co-locators. Uh, so like maybe like another carrier proposing to go on the tower. Um, and I, I could get uh, one of the engineers that I work with to send a more detailed explanation of that. Um, but 
my understanding is that as long as the structural analysis is passing at this with this equipment that's proposed, um, that's no, there's no um, concern, cause for concern there. It would be another co-locator coming along to add equipment. Yeah, and, and I'm going to add to that, Steve, as well, is they'll have to come into the building department with for a building permit mm -hmm. for the co-locator. And again, we would ask for the structural analysis and make sure that everything is, is okay before um, they would issue the building permit. Okay, so in this case, they've outlining the equipment they're planning and installing, the tower would be sufficiently uh, stable enough to do that. They just can't put anything in addition on, right? That was the way I interpreted it, yes. Okay, uh, the reason I bring this up is because on another one of the applications, there was a letter from one of the engineers saying that it was insufficient to handle the equipment they were planning on putting in. That was on the um, 475 Coffins Road application. I guess we'll have to look at that one a little more closely because that's our tower. And she's on she's on 21-019 as well. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. on 119. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can speak on behalf of 475 Coffins. Okay, I don't want to get ahead of our yeah. applications here, but uh... okay. Well, set, Mr. Mack, I'm all set. Yep, sir. thank you. Okay, the show recognize Mr. Eckert. I keep forgetting to turn my mic on. Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I had the same question as Mr. McIntyre. Um, again, everything is uh, so there's going to be four separate devices or set series of devices on this tower. Instead of being the third, this is going to be the third one down now. Um, this one. I believe would be the second one, second wireless carrier down based on the construction drawings. Okay, uh, well, I'm going with 183 to Sinclair, 180 to T-Mobile, 130 to Verizon, and this is going in at 153. So, and that's okay. I, there isn't gonna be oh, okay. any much more space to add anything to this, I guess is my comment. It, oh yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I can understand that. Uh, but once I'm looking through the um, structural analysis and, and that communication, I mean, it's going to be fine as it sits, but right, nothing further. We have a caveat, Mr. Martin, of um, yearly reports, or where are we with that? We do. And that's something that we would be looking for from the tower owner um, and to, you know, to get that annual report. Uh, a lot of times it's very hard to get from the tower owners. So if you could put in a good word for them, <laughs> that, that would be beneficial. Yeah, I absolutely can do that. Thank you. Well, that was my only other comment too, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eckert. Chair will recognize Mr. Borkowski. No comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Borkowski. Chair will recognize Mrs. Brill. Thank you. Chris, if you could just confirm for me um, the yearly report that you required is a report on. Yeah, it's um, indicated in our town code. Um, let's see. Um, it's some of it is more like a structural analysis to make sure that the towers, because with age, sometimes they do weaken a little bit. Um, well, yeah, I think what we're looking for is annual safety report for this tower should be provided from the owner. The tower is indicated in section 295-51E of the town code. So if you can look into to that, um, that would spell it out a little more clearly, which is also in, our, in comment number seven. I just wanted to get that um, down so that the owner does have that, so that it's not a difficulty on an annual basis getting the report. Thank you for that. I'm that would be set. appreciated. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brill. The chair will recognize Mr. Barley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess in listening to everyone, who's responsible for the safety of the tower? The owner? That's correct. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, yes, that's correct. Um, so, the antennas that you're putting on, in layman's terms, what do they do? Um, they'll be a new wireless provider, so uh, like Verizon or AT&T. Okay. So, it would handle 
telephones, any other services? Um, yeah, just a uh, cellular, cellular service, yeah. Okay. All right, I have no other questions. Thank you, Mr. Barley. You heard it here, dish is going wireless. Yeah. <laughs> any other comments from the board before we go into seeker? Okay, seeker review indicates the action under consideration is an unlisted action as per section 617.7C1VIII. The Henrietta Planning Board as lead agency has determined that the proposed action described below will not have a significant effect on the environment and that a draft environmental impact statement will not be required. The action under consideration is a site plan application by Dish Wireless LLC. It is an unlisted action and will not require a conditioned negative declaration. The purpose of this application is for final site plan approval for the installation of dish wireless antennas on the existing tower located at 5200 West Henrietta Road in a commercial B1 zoned district. All relevant areas of environmental concern were identified. Evaluation and examination were carefully made in relation of the existing conditions versus the proposed site improvements. It has been determined that there will be no adverse environmental effect as a result of the proposed action. I, James Grunert, therefore make the motion that we make a negative declaration and that the chairman be authorized to sign the statement of environmental significance. Do I have a sufficient second, please? Second. Mrs. Brill, thank you. Discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. The opinion of the chair of the ayes have it. We have seeker. Chair will entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just have a quick question. Um, yes, Mr. Borkowski. Mr. Barley got me thinking, because there's two entities here, there's the people that are trying to put the cellular on and then we got the tower owners. Mm -hmm. In the event that we approve this site plan and something structurally happens to the, the, the integrity of the structural uh, stuff happens and this thing fails, who's liable? Well, I mean, typically I would say it's a tower owner, but we have our distinguished attorney here, Mr. Mastrella. I'd like to have his opinion. I, <clears throat> I think that uh, generally speaking, that the owner of the tower is responsible and they may have, uh, you know, indemnification uh, claims re with the actual providers, but it's the owner that's regulated by the code. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we weren't sticking ourselves with any kind of liability, but we're approving this, not the tower itself, correct? Correct. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to clear that up. Very good. Motion to approve. Mrs. Brill. Second. Mr. McIntyre, thank you. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The opinion of the chair of the ayes have it. The application is approved. Um, anybody have a issue? Can we move right to 19 with Melanie here? And uh, Yeah, why well, Melanie's okay. here, why don't we just jump to 19 and then we can come back to 21-18. So Melanie, we're going to go to uh, your application 21020. It's, uh, I'm sorry, 21019. Uh, application 21019, Dish Wireless Co-Location, 475 Calkins Road. For final site plan approval of or for the installation of dish wireless antennas on the existing tower located at 475 Calkins Road in a residential R115 zone district. So any, any other comments you want to make relative to this application that might be different from the one we just approved? Um, no, it's a very similar scope. Um, basically, uh, same height. Uh, the height was previously approved and we're not increasing the height uh, and it's within the same uh, base station that's already existing. Uh, and I am trying to get some clarification on that structural analysis that um, was referenced. So uh, hoping I could get something, but uh, for now that uh, it's very similar scope. So I'll welcome any questions you might have. Okay, very good. Chair will recognize Mr. Liss. I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, sir. Chair will recognize Mr. McIntyre. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, that was Al, Al Bull Engineering that wrote this on June 4th, 2021. And it seemed, the second paragraph seems pretty, unless I'm reading this, you know, I'm taking getting the wrong impression from it, but it does seem to say 
that the superstructure would be deemed inadequate to support any further equipment on it. So that sounds like a showstopper to me. And uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may uh, intercede here, and Mr. Mistrella, um correct me where I'm wrong here, and I'll probably have to abstain from voting on this, which I intended to do anyway. Uh, the town took over the ownership of the structure in September. The sprint, the sprint lease at 25 years ended. So the town now owns the tower out back. Um, I have been securing a, uh, well, DISH actively sought us out in the beginning. Uh, quick digression on that is DISH has been, um, what's the proper term here? <clears throat> um, court appointed to be, when with the merger of T-Mobile and Sprint taking over the one and two spot, the one and three spot, DISH has been asked to fill the third role uh, with a court order, I believe, if that's not, if I'm not incorrect on that statement. But uh, in their ability to do so, which is why we're seeing all these other co-location fees, they're trying to fill that void. So we've, they've reached out to us. We've agreed uh, to a contract. We've agreed, and, and Don Young has reviewed the contract. Going back to the structural analysis insufficiency, um, I believe you might have um, a previous report because DISH did originally come in. Uh, Elbow Engineering is the town's engineer out of Buffalo. It's actually an RIT grad, and he did the structural analysis on our behalf for DISH. So DISH reached out to him, but because we did another report with him, uh, DISH went through Elbow to get the structural analysis complete. I, I believe the original equipment did fail, but the next report when they diminished the equipment or changed the type of equipment that was going up there passed. That is the, the passing structural integrity report that I received, and that's what Don Young has been reviewing in reviewing the lease, which is going to town board on the 26th for approval for the board. So we have received the contract and the lease and everything else from Tilson to approve their co-location. I will double check that analysis. And I don't know, um, Melanie, if that's something that you have, if there's a secondary report that you have access to, I could not find it quickly on the laptop. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking too, because um, so I'm talking to the project manager now who I you might have spoken to, Michael Long. Um, and he's yep. saying uh, so the the structural analysis is more of um, just information for the tower owner themselves and that it takes into equipment not only dishes equipment, it takes into account not only dishes equipment, but future equipment that there's space for, I guess. Um, so I think that is why that specific structure anal structural analysis was labeled inadequate. Um, and I'm seeing if I can find that more recent one. The, the top tier of the tower now is still owned by Sprint um, and they're scheduled to come in and remove their equipment in the next couple of weeks, but the analysis was done with their equipment still intact. T-Mobile owns the second slot and DISH is now, it, with the lease, will own the third slot. Okay. You're saying that it failed because they were assuming Sprint would still be there and this new equipment would be added on there making it inadequate? Um, my understanding is that they came in with, a, the, the first time they came in for a structural analysis with the equipment that they had, it did not pass for something. It, whatever it was, I'm not 100% sure. And when they say, augmented that equipment. Existing equipment. No, with their with Dish's proposed equipment, with when Dish came in with a proposal to install equipment on the tower, it initially didn't pass. They had to alter their equipment to get it to pass. Mm -hmm. So that alteration is the final structural analysis that I saw. It's the only one that we did receive. We did not receive one that I recall. This is maybe going back to six eight months of um, of an insufficiency in the structural analysis. So we're the tower owner. We're, we shared. We have the liability, right? If yeah. anything happens to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't I'll look at Don or Dan, but I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is our tower. Yeah. We own it out right now as of September. So I think obviously, you know, before a building permit is issued for this, we would just want to make sure that we had an updated structural analysis report, whether it's, you know, maybe one's already done or something that shows that everything's okay. And that's my understanding that has occurred, which is why Don went forward with the lease agreement. So yeah, that's that's my understanding too. And there's always so many updates to these documents that 
that is, I'm sure what happened. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll make sure we get that document. Okay. Melanie, yeah, I do have, um, I believe it is Mr. Young's uh, email, but he's just as of, I believe, January taken over as the project manager. Prior to that, I had uh, Genevieve. Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, do you have an email correspondence um, via uh, Mr. Young? Um, from that includes the document or? Yeah, the last correspondence between him and I. Do you have, I guess what I'm asking is, do you have my email? I'd like to send out an email with to you and to the planning board with the structure analysis that I'm using. That um, yeah, I do have I do have his email. I don't know if I have your email though. Actually, is that sufficient? Is that what we want to? Well, what I was wondering is if we approve the application tonight, do we have a sufficient safeguard in place? To something to do through the building department, to make sure that when they go to do this installation that the tower will have the adequacy that it needs. And it sounds like it will. Yeah, sure. The building department would an issue the building permit without it. Correct. But you may even, if, I don't know if it makes sense to even make it a requirement of the approval that you receive a structure, a passing structural analysis. A condition, yeah. Is, our condition, is that? I was tempted to go. Exactly. That's what I was going to suggest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think we can it's a conditional approval. I'm understanding that that exists. So if that's you know, something that even I or Tilson can produce is an updated passing structural analysis. Um, if you want to make that a condition of the approval. I think that'd be a good idea. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'm set. Okay, so Great. sorry for that long-winded diatribe. <laughs> Got enough trouble. Okay. That is expected. Um, let me see, where did I start? Okay. The chair will recognize Mr. Record. You're yeah, I'll be abstaining from voting, sir. Okay. I think that would be the safe thing to do. Thank you. The chair will recognize Mrs. Brill. <clears throat> so just to confirm, um, assuming we will do a conditional approval, the verbiage would be um, that we have, once we have received an updated construction, constructional analysis. Structural. Not constructional, structural. Mm -hmm. um, and how does the equipment differ from what it was before it was not approved, other than being removal of the sprint? No. Uh, she's looking at me, Melanie, while she asked that. So I, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know what they changed in their equipment. Um, and again, I'm trying to recall specifically. So forgive me if I might be slightly incorrect here. Uh, I, I believe through talking to our structural engineer, Abul, in Buffalo, the original analysis did fail. So they changed their equipment. I don't know what they changed. Um, to make it pass. I, I don't know if they came in with old equipment or if something changed internally or if they were going to use something else. I'm not sure. The equipment that's been up there is morphed over the decades. It, getting through it has actually been quite a headache between Ericsson that folded cricket. And, you know, when co one company buys another and this equipment just becomes one to another, it's very hard to pinpoint. Sure. And um, I, I'm not a sprint um, customer, but I'm curious, the sprint um, units will be removed from this tower as well as the other ones? The Well, the only tower that we own is the only one that I have in. But, but the three in question, I mean, is sprint, I, I'm just curious, sprint being removed from the towers, did they, did you say at the beginning they were bought by somebody else or partnered with somebody else? Sprint and T-Mobile merged. T-Mobile, thank you. I don't know if sprint resides on any other towers that she's dealing with at the moment. Well, this one's getting removed from this right. tower. Yeah, that's the only one that I have any information on. Right. Yeah. Melanie, it goes back to the other um, the other application. Do you know if Sprint is currently on that other cell tower? Um, let me take a look. It's kind of a moot point. I was just curious that you know Sprint customers are out there, and you know their towers are being they're they're being removed from the towers now. So will they be utilizing the T-Mobile? Since they're merging, um, deals with who, what kind of equipment's on there. Yeah, yeah, they're not uh, being, they're not moving all of their equipment, like from every tower. Uh, but um, it basically, uh, my understanding is, it just depends on the specific site. 
Okay, other than that, I um, apologize. That was kind of an offline comment, but I was curious. Other than that, I am all set, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brill. Chair, would like to acknowledge, is it Councilperson Safranek? Yes. No? Yes, that yes, is Yes, thank you. Okay, Safranek. hard to tell. We just want to Safranek. acknowledge that Council, Councilperson Safranek is in attendance. Thank you. Uh, let's see, the Chair will recognize Mr. Borkowski. No comments. Thank you. Chair will recognize Mr. Barley. One question: Does does the town board need this approval to move on their action on the twenty six? Their action is on the twenty six. The action is to um, uh, approve the lease agreement. Uh, no, probably not, unless uh, you, they they may need the secret approval but they might not need the site plan approval. Thank you. Uh, for Melanie, um, if you were to find out some additional information about the structure of, of this tower, are you gonna pass that on to uh, Mr. Martin? Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay, no other questions. Thank you, Mr. Barley. Okay, we'll move to Seeker. Seeker review indicates the action under consideration is an unlisted action as per section 617.7 C1VIII. The Henrietta Planning Board as lead agency has determined that the proposed action described below will not have a significant effect on the environment and that a draft environmental impact statement will not be required. The action under consideration is a site plan application by Dish Wireless LLC. It is an unlisted action and will not require a conditioned negative declaration. The purpose of this application is for final site plan approval for the installation of dish wireless antennas on the existing tower located at 475 Calkins Road in a residential R115 zoned district. All relevant areas of environmental concern were identified. Evaluation and examination were carefully made in relation of the existing conditions versus the proposed site improvements. It has been determined that there will be no adverse environmental effect as a result of the proposed action. I, James Gruner, therefore make the motion that we make a negative declaration and that the chairman be authorized to sign the statement of environmental significance. Do I have a sufficient second, please? Second. Who's that, Mr. Mr. Liss? Mr. Liss, thank you. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Oh, okay. And Mr. Record, abstention. Thank you. In the opinion of the chair, the motion carries. We have Seeker. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, I, Mr. Borkowski. I'll make a motion to approve uh, application 21-019, but conditional on a passing structural analysis report. Second. Good. Thank you. I have a sufficient second, please. Second. Oh, Mr. Barley, thank you. <clears throat> Discussion? I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Mr. McIntyre for bringing up uh, the structural concerns. Oh, yeah, good you, catch Charlie. on that, for sure. Very good. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. And one abstention, Mr. Eckert. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you all so much. You're welcome. Have a good night. Yeah. Thank good you. Night. You too, Melanie. Thanks. Okay, next on the agenda is application number 21-018, DISH Wireless Co-location at 20 Riverton Way for final site plan approval for the installation of a DISH Wireless antenna on the existing tower located at 20 Riverton Way in an industrial limited commercial zone district. Who's here representing the applicant, please? Uh, Daryl Gresham from NBNC Consulting. Hi, Daryl, how are you? How you doing? Good, thank you. Okay, sir, the floor is yours. Okay, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Daryl Gresham. I work for NBNC representing Dish Wireless. 
I know just now you heard a couple of just wireless sites and mine isn't any different than theirs. We come in to install three antennas and additional equipment on the tower and all the necessary equipment on the ground in a five by seven lease area. We won't be expanding the footprint on the ground of the compound and we will not be extending the height of the tower. Right now we're looking to go at 131 feet and we are just the second carrier on this tower. And I have provided a pass and structural and I, everything should be good to go. I couldn't say any more about it actually than you already heard. Yeah, very good. And did you see Mr. Martin's comments? Yes, I did. Okay. And, and I can have those addressed. That's, that's they're not a problem. I looked at them earlier today. Okay. And they're mostly the tower owner. I would give it to American Tower and they will address all these comments. Most of them look like they're um, drawing changes, things you want to add it to the drawings. And I can have that done. Okay, good. Mr. Martin, I'll ask you, is, is the uh, same... Uh, Concept with the surety bond on this one, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, so we would want a surety bond. Usually, um, you know, the applicant gives us a mount and we review it to make sure that it's okay. Uh, and I think also for the letter of credit, because it's so straightforward that we would probably waive that as well. Okay. Um, also, I'd like to point out, Daryl, that we'll send you some, um, you know, markups that go along with the comments. So okay. it'll make a little more sense, but there really wasn't much to it. It's mostly, you know, adding the, uh, a, signature approval lines mm -hmm. and uh, that was basically it. So very straightforward. Okay. Okay, Darrell, you, you all set there? Uh, me? Yes, sir. Yeah, everything, yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, the chair will recognize Mr. Barley. I'll start with you this time. All right, uh, Daryl, it seems that there's more than just the three antennas going on this particular tower. There's yeah, we vector mounts, there's six RRUs, and there's one OVP. What are those? They are up right behind the antenna. The sector mounts are the mounts that hold the antennas. Okay. And the RRUs are the radios that sit right behind the antennas. Okay. And the OVP sits behind, that's an overpower protection unit they have that sits behind the antenna. It's only one of those. All right. All right. No, qu no further questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barley. The chair will recognize Mr. Borkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, are there, because we're on the structural integrity, does anybody know if we have any structural integrity issues with this one? I can't pull up the report. I don't... Yeah, I, I don't have it in my, my notes. Oh. So that's why I'm asking. No, I, I do have a, um, a structural evaluation. Again, it's Chris Martin, Director of Engineering and Planning. Um, I did get a copy of the structural evaluation. I'm not sure why it was in your packets, but in any event, um, there weren't any issues on this one. Okay. Again, Thank you. there's only, this is the second co-locator on the tower. Um, so again, no issues there. Okay. That, that was my only question, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Borkowski. The chair will recognize Mrs. Brill. I have nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Chair will recognize Mr. Record. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no other questions either. Thank, thank you. Chair will recognize Mr. McIntyre. I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Good. Chair will recognize Mr. Liss. Hey, just one one uh, thing I, I'd like to know. What's an ice bridge? The ice bridge is a is a, a metal, I guess you could call it like it's a metal, little metal bridge yep. that carries the cables over to the tower. Oh, okay. Well, that was all I had. That's all. Okay, Thank very you. good. I'm good. Yeah, we'll move into seeker. I should have this memorized by now. <laughs> Seeker review indicates the action under consideration is an unlisted action as per section 617.7 C1VIII. The Henrietta Planning Board as lead agency has determined that the proposed action described below will not have a significant effect on the environment and that a draft environmental impact statement will not be required. The action under consideration is a site plan application by Dish Wireless LLC. It is an unlisted action and will not require a conditioned negative declaration. The purpose of this application is for final site plan approval for the installation of dish wireless antennas on the existing tower located at 20 Riverton Way in an industrial limited commercial zone district. 
All relevant areas of environmental concern were identified. Evaluation and examination were carefully made in relation of the existing conditions versus the proposed site improvements. It has been determined that there will be no adverse environmental effect as a result of the proposed action. So I, James Gruner, therefore make the motion that we make a negative declaration and that the chairman be authorized to sign a statement of environmental significance. Second. Mr. Barley, thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. We have seeker. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I motion to approve application 21-018, co-locator 20 Riverton Way. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Do I have a sufficient second? Second. Mr. Eckert. Thank you. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion carries. Daryl, you're all set. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Okay. Last night, uh, last application this evening is application number 21-020. It's a single family home at 197 River Meadow Drive. This will be for final site plan approval. Uh, in a resident, uh, I'm sorry, 197 River Meadow Drive in a residential R115 zoned district. Well, good evening. Good evening. I'm Walt Baker. Good evening. I'm Walt Baker with DSP Engineers. Uh, with me tonight is Mr. and Mrs. Spahn, the owners of Atlas Construction. Good evening. The, own, the owners of the property at, at 197 is River Meadows. Uh, this particular lot is on the south side of River Meadows, and it's one lot over from the corner of Landing Street. So it's been a vacant lot for a number of years and Mr. Spahn purchased it from the adjacent property owner and he wishes to build a single family home on there with a garage. Uh, he did bring the building plans. If you have any specific questions for him regarding the, the structure itself, it's gonna be a two story, three bedroom house. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did receive comments from the town engineer and uh, we don't have any issues with any of them except number five on his list. Uh, he said it indicated on the drawing that the project is located within a 100 year floodplain. Actually, the, the note on the plan is we're not in the 100 year floodplain. This says we're in a 100 year floodplain. The 100 year floodplain, I believe, is like a 518 elevation, and we're about 521. We're in a zone X, which is a FEMA designation uh, floodplain. Or, uh, the Federal Environmental Management Associate Authority. So we are in a zone X, which is not mapped, where the floodplain is mapped as it goes down uh, the Genesee River, which is basically the properties on the north side of River Meadows. Uh, we've done a number of lots along River Meadows over the years, and uh, the ones that actually back up to the Genesee River, and definitely there's a 100-year flood zone there. So we're actually in a zone X. Well, let me, based on our review, and we'll verify this, but we have a BFE of 524 instead of the 518. So I see that's quite a difference, but, you know, we'll double check our records to make sure. Right. Okay. Um, but yeah. obviously, if it is a floodplain, then it's got to be two foot above. Right. Which the structure is, I think 527 is our. Right. And that's elevation. why. Yeah. We thought that 524 would make sense, but let us confirm that just in yeah. case we made a mistake. Yeah, but like you mentioned, we are at a 527, so yeah, very good. we're higher than that that number. Other than that, uh, there was comment about a chain link fence and the chain link fence, there's actually, it's been on the property when it was owned by the Jason property owner and it runs along parallel to River Meadows and Mr. Spahn will have that chain link fence removed to the property line so it'll be open. Uh, there was comments about buffering along the sides of the property for the adjacent property owners. And those are probably concerns you have as well. Uh, Mr. Spahn stated that obviously, I think the structure uh, that you're building has not as many windows or- Yeah, we, we designed it that when you're facing the house to the right of the neighbor, uh, it's to the west. Yeah. Yep. Can we get you, I'm sorry, can we have you uh, grab a microphone on the, the table over there, please. Or you can stand. You can stand there. That's fine. Yep. If if you notice the site plan, um, we took in the effect of the neighbor to the west, like you say, and we put the driveway side on the east side, so the neighbor would only be seeing the house side, wouldn't be seeing any cars or 
we did the visibility that way. But what were you saying about the windows, Michael? Well, we put less windows on that west wall, on west. and we put all the windows on the um, south and, and um, east. It looks wall. like no windows, not less windows. Am I right? Yeah, pretty much zero. <laughs> okay, thank you. The east side out obviously is uh, the side where the house actually fronts on uh, Landing Street. Okay. And they have a greater setback to their property line. We tried to center the building. So it's in the center of the lot. So we try to minimize the effect that you're saying. Can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Martin, certainly, sir. Um, Cause I did talk to the homeowner on the east side and she was curious, are those all those trees gonna remain then? I know some are on her property, but I just wanted to verify that. Any trees that are on the property line itself will stay. All right, which will act as a nice buffer as well. All right, I'm finished. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Mr. Martin. So we did not have, uh, did we have a, a copy of those plans in our packet? We did not, right? No. Does anybody on the board wish to see uh, the, the elevations for the? Sure. Yeah. I, I would like to. Post. Yes. Thanks too. so much. Appreciate it. Why don't you start with Mr. Eckert and then we can just pass them, uh, pass them down this way if everybody's comfortable Thanks with so that. Thanks so much. But it's not uncommon for a residential not to see them. I was just curious, just because of the nature of, um, the architecture of the homes back there, how it mm -hmm. melds. And I remember there was a situation that came gosh, a few months back with a, a home that was being built on across the street from his no. existing property. Something we'll see that at one again in February. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah? Great. That's a long story, but I'll, I'll, I'll share it after the meeting. Well, while, while Mr. Eckert's looking at the drawings, we'll get those passed around, but the chair will recognize Mr. Liss uh, if you'd like to. Yeah, I, I was down, I had never been down River Meadow Drive before. I went down the other day and this lot, it really is narrow. It's a narrow lot and it's, it's going to be, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a, a challenge to put something really nice in there. Um, the, the, if you, when you look at the design, we designed a custom okay. to fit that lot. To get it, it's, you, are, you are removing that chain link, that, that yes. ugly fence that was in front. Correct. And the trees that you're are you proposing? I, I understand two trees that go in. Will will the be trees in the, on the center lot will be removed, but all the property line trees will stay. And what what would be the estimated time of uh, complete or start completion? Well, we'd like to start in the spring and finish by fall. Yeah. Right, that's all I have right now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. List. Chair will recognize Mr. McIntyre. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Um, Walt, good evening. Good evening. I, as I looked at this project, um, it is a very challenging lot to build on as, as they have done in the past. Um, the biggest challenge I see is the drainage to try to prevent runoff from going on to the th three different neighbors that border this property. I can recall that we had a situation several years ago on Oak Mills Crossing where we had a similar situation where your client had to provide a drainage swale that kept the runoff from his properties draining onto a property on the shore drive. The outcome of that, your client refused to complete the work on that swale. So if that neighbor on shore drive wound up having to endure hmm. additional runoff on his property and that's the way it was left. So I, in good conscience, do not want to see this happen to the adjacent neighbors to this property. So sorry, but I'm going to vote no on this. I understand. Uh, I would like to just bring that yeah. up for a second. Okay. That was at um, 678, 682 Shore Drive. It was in a cul-de-sac. Oh, I remember. We built the well. two houses across the street. The drainage issue was across the street from where we were, not on the property we own. It was on the town's property. Oh, no, this was your, this was between 147 Oak Mills and 639 Shore Drive. I was there several times working with you on that. And you put it off year after year after year. Six, seven, I don't finally, remember that one. Refused, I, honestly, I just you refused to do it. So right. that to me constitutes a broken agreement. And how can I trust you on the next property? I realized there was an issue there. 
It but, wasn't. I mean, you got so mad, you stormed off and said you weren't going to do it. So, um, I, it just, like I said, I can't in good faith possibly subject the neighbors to this if you decide you don't want to do what's got to be done to make sure that the drainage is adequate there. I don't know on this. I'm sorry. I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Mr. Chair, we're there. I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry if I could interject something. Yes, go ahead, Walt. Uh, Chris did in his comments, uh, number or letter F, letter of credit. So I assume he probably spoke to you about that or recalls that himself and, and uh, asked that a letter of credit be posted for this single house. So if we could do that and include- no, I didn't. I didn't okay. discuss well, with Chris well, other than tell him today I was gonna be a no vote. Well, you know, Chris, he, he comes up with good ones. So <laughs> that's, I was a little surprised that we have a letter of credit to build a house on a single lot myself, but. Uh, well, let me point out that the, we had a letter of credit on the other properties too. Yeah, well, if we, we could do that, that obviously include, Sorry. include something to, to ensure that uh, there's some finances held for that. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, the chair will recognize Mr. Eckert. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in hearing Mr. McIntyre's concerns, I'm going to, um, I, I hear them loudly and I'm, I'm understanding of what he went through with that, uh, for that. Um, Chris even made a, a partial comment and we have to check to see if it's true, if that, if the letter of credit on that other residence is still even open. He believes that letter of credit is still in existence. Um, can I make a comment that we ask that to be fixed? Or is those is separate that a completely property. separate property and application? Yeah, you can't make it a condition of this approval that he right. improve a separate previously approved. Okay. Mr. Eckert, can I have you hold for a moment sure. and give the floor to Mr. McIntyre? Yeah, I mean, I'm very passionate about this application. Uh, because of all the problems that I had, but I don't want to sway the planning board um, based on my experiences. I want you, you know, this should be a, this application should be probably approved, but I just want everything to be put on the record that we can't have the same situation repeated a second time and, and have this happen to other residents on River Meadow Drive. That's all I really wanted to bring out. Okay. Mr. McIntyre, yeah. thank you for that clarification, but I'm backing your um, initial thoughts that that is a breach of contract. I mean, I, I'm going to use that term probably out of context and Dan can correct me on that. But when we ask uh, a developer to come in and do something, we ask it to be done properly. And if you were asking for something to be done properly and it didn't get done, I have a problem with that as well, because mm -hmm. we do have a lot of other projects that have that same consistency. So, um, if we have a letter of credit on this project, uh, I'm going to make sure that we uh, follow through to that. But I'm, I'm thankful for your comments on that. Okay. Mr. Mastrella, can we take into consideration a previous approval in our decision on this? Well, so it, generally speaking, the you know this is this relates to the land and the land use, not uh, the individual applicant, so to speak. Uh, you certainly, if you have issues with past performance by the applicant, it, it, it's not that you're required to ignore them, but you, uh, for instance, the, 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 the notion of a letter of credit, which you know isn't necessarily required uh, in all instances with the single family residence. In fact, the, the planning board certainly has the authority under the town code uh, to do a site plan review. It's, it's not mandatory for a single or two family residence. Um, so yes, you can consider uh, what, if, if you believe it's established that there have been uh, prior transgressions, so to speak, and you can try to account for those, but you can't deny the application based upon the uh, applicant rather than the application itself. 
And I think I'd like to add as well is, um, you know, Mr. Spahn has done a lot of projects in Henrietta and, you know, like any developer, there's always a few that, you know, hang on. So maybe the, the compromise here would be is we could take a fresh look at the shore drive project and to see if there's anything that, that can be done at this late stage. Um, Cause I think we do have a few items on the punch list. And I think we still may have an open letter of credit. Um, so it'd be nice to close that one out. Yeah. I'm, I'm more than willing to make a resolution of this whole thing. I'm not here to walk away. I didn't realize that how he took that at that time. I honestly, God dropped me dead here. I don't remember it. Okay. But that conversation, but I will clear it up. If, if you want to contact me or, or follow up, give me the addresses and we'll take a look at it. We'll definitely, whatever it costs, we'll fix it. Okay. Oh, I'm all Thank set. Uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, I think I still have the floor. Is that okay? You do, okay. yes. So the other comment that I had prior to other discussion um, was I believe there was um, some concerns on the other neighbors on construction fence or just some safety. Uh, also, I mean, being that this is such a small site, it's 50 feet wide. Uh, per the construction. Uh, I was actually kind of hoping that maybe the chain link on the east side could even reside temporarily as a safety barrier until the construction was done and then it can come down. I know if that could be utilized or if we just need to have some orange construction fence, you know, on both sides or Chris, is that uh, maybe a comment that we can take a look at? Yeah, well, I, I did talk to the owner, like again, on the east side of the property. And I, I think it was her wish that that fence would stay I don't know what the condition of it is, if it's in poor condition or I'm not sure. I haven't looked at it, but any of our job sites are fully fenced in with orange fence around the whole, all four perimeters. Okay. Yeah. But if the it, fence is, you know, that we can save it, we'll save it. If it's not, it's going to come down. Yeah. Are you planning to put a basement in on this one or is it going to be a slab on grade? It's raised. Yeah, slab on grade right now. Oh. Right. I thought it was raised. It's raised to the flood thing. Okay. For the crawl space. For the crawl space. Oh, crawl space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, that was the only comment that I had for the safety. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Director. Chair, will recognize Mr. Borkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, I just want to revisit something. When you were asked, um, the neighbor mentioned a couple of things, that there are walnut trees. And actually, I believe that she didn't like the walnut trees because they were just pepper in her yard, right? So are those on her property or yours? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. Exactly. I would say it looks from like looking at the drawings, uh, Mr. Borkowski, it looks like they're one foot one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm watching, I'm looking at the satellite and it's it's kind of hard to tell. One, one thing I want to bring up about trees today, all right? We all know, you know, I cannot guarantee, you know, I, I like to leave the trees in the property line. We don't know the condition of them. We don't know the health of them, all right? So if a tree comes down or something, we, we're we going to go through those trees and make sure they're pruned and strong enough and stable so they can last years to come. Because like you say, it's a narrow lot. It's only the best time to clean them up is now. But if we can save them, we definitely want to save them. Yeah, and to that point, um, <clears throat> when you're asked about additional buffering, your answer was, we don't have windows there. Well, that's good that this new house can't look into the other house, but that doesn't actually address buffering. So it's, a, it's about the other direction, too. They could be looking out at this stark wall. Are you going to do anything to buffer that? We have nothing planned right now because, see, there's so many large trees there with the fence or anything. And, and I know it's narrow. There's not a lot of room. The large trees also mean that the growth doesn't start until higher, so there's no buffer. Um, I just noticed that when I asked about buffered, buffering, you you mentioned windows, which two different things. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Borkowski. Chair will recognize Mrs. Brill. Thank you. Um, people not living in this house, am I correct? I don't correct. know if it's is it made to be sold or leased. Please. It will be a lease situation. Um, I agree on the letter of credit just to have something in place if there should be, um, you know, an outfall of issues that that come up. Um, I think the design of the house is lovely. I think it's nice and narrow, um, like a shotgun type of design, which is needed for that parcel. And quite frankly, it'll only improve improve upon um, the area back there. So. Um, I kindly ask that you, you know, stay in touch with everybody to yes, take we'll care of some of the last definitely. things and work with us moving yep, we're forward. We're here for on a lifetime, this. generations to come. Thank you, Mr. Spahn. Appreciate it. All set, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Brill. Mr. Barley, did I get to you this go around yet? No, you have not, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Sure. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. 
um, for Walt and Mr. Spahn. Um, this is going to be a rental you, you mentioned, right? Correct. So it will be on our registry. Correct. There's a number of residents in that area that are already complaining about rentals. Um, I'm not recalling if this street is one side you can't park on because we need emergency vehicles to get down the street. Is that true? On one side of the street, you can't park on the street? I think it is on, on our side, but if you take the design, we took that in consideration about setting the garage way back and having enough parking. So the property itself has enough parking for you know X amount of cars. Okay. Um, how many square feet would this be? 2,300 square feet? How many bedrooms was it gonna be? It's three bedrooms. Three bedrooms. Are you planning on renting this out to a family or students? It could be all of above. I mean, you're aware that we have a big problem with no. rentals and everything that goes along with that in our community. And I'm not vouching for code enforcement, but if you ask them right now, they're telling us we're doing an excellent job in management and we're going above and beyond to be, a, you know, be involved in the community here. Um, there are residents on this on this street that live on the other side um, that have been asking about making sure people can't park on their side on the street because it's so small and narrow down there also. Just to make the board aware of that, that it is a big issue on that street. It's really, really small. Um, there are a lot of longtime residents down there that still have issues. There was another house that was gonna be built down there and it was a really small lot like yeah, this one. I think the application will be coming through next right. month, but we redesigned that house too. It's that house because that house was a different design and we made a house that would fit there. Okay. But I'll bring up the parking. You know, I know many years ago, I don't know how many years ago it was, Chris, that you did um, no parking, no Phillips crossing. Right. And what they did was they did oh, on one side, they did no parking on one side 24 hours, and the other side, they did it, you know half the day. Mm -hmm. And that really eliminated that effect that you're having on river okay. metals. I'm just giving that suggestion. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I don't have any other further questions. Thank you, Mr. Back to you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any other comments from town staff? I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Okay, we'll move ahead with Seeker. Seeker review indicates the action under consideration is an unlisted action as per section 617.7 C1VIII. The Henrietta Planning Board as lead agency has determined that the proposed action described below will not have a significant effect on the environment and that a draft environmental impact statement will not be required. The action under consideration is a site plan application by Atlas General Contractors Incorporated. It is an unlisted action and will not require a condition negative declaration. The purpose of this application is for final site plan approval for a single family home located at 197 River Meadow Drive in a residential R115 zoned district. All relevant areas of environmental concern were identified. Evaluation and examination were carefully made in relation of the existing conditions versus the proposed site improvements. It has been determined that there will be no adverse environmental effect as a result of the proposed action. I, James Grunert, therefore make the motion that we make a negative declaration and that the chairman be authorized to sign the statement of environmental significance. We have a sufficient second, please. Second. Mr. Ecker, thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Opinion of the chair, motion carries. We have seeker. Chair sure will entertain a motion for application number 21-020. Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question based off of Mr. McIntyre's comment on grading. Chris, can you point me to a note on the plans for the grading? Do we have a specific note that mentions, you know, positive drainage and to be? I think that's one of our comment that my comments that I have in the drawings to make sure that there's something on the plans that says that. Okay, so we'll work on that note. Then. Okay, right. so that development. I just wanted to make sure we had something based off that grading going forward, so we had something in the letter of credit to go to. Okay. Can you find that for me, Chris? Yeah. So in, in my comment number, in front of me. Let's see. Probably on one of the grading comments. Yeah, it's E1. Is it E1? Well, let's see. Do the thing. 
Uh, number five. So I would say E number four. I'm sorry, E number five, but you know, some of the other ones could correspond to about um, number four talks about additional spot elevations. <clears throat> but I think number five talks about a drainage swale between the eastern and western property lines, which is, yeah, again, it's going to be challenging because of the trees. But again, we want to make sure that there's no impact to the adjacent properties. So number E uh, five, if you want to put that in as a Thank you. Possible condition or how we or something to be included in the letter of credit. And has the commissioner, public works, or highway superintendent seen these plans in any yes. process? So they they're not okay have any with comments open at cut? this point. No so that's comments. something we'll have to confirm with them, but um, my guess is no, just because of um, some of the other projects that have gone along that street. Not gonna have a problem with it. I don't think so, no. Okay. I'd like to verify that with them. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, for that. That's answer. okay, Mr. Record. I've got a question for the applicant. Um, you indicated that you're you're not sure about those walnut trees, right? You're not sure if they're gonna stay or they're gonna go at this point? Well, or, or are they going to stay in your opinion? In my opinion, because they're on the property line, I like them to stay. Just yep, for, okay. But what I'm saying is the, this past year, we got a lot of people call us back while you're taking the tree down, but it's rotted, ready to fall down just with all the winds and stuff. I'm just saying, I want the trees to stay there. But for some reason, also we see the inside of the trees. Yeah, you that's know, I fine. haven't even looked inspect the trees yet. So. Yeah, where I was going to go with this is if they're chosen to stay, would you be willing to maybe trim them off on your neighbor's side to eliminate some of the nuts falling on her yard? Well, definitely, like I said before, we do. You know, that's why I want to bring up the trees for it before we start development. It, the lot's so narrow after we build the house, it's hard to get a, a bucket truck in there. Okay, so yeah. we'll we'll clean up the trees. You can make that a provision. I don't no problem with that. Yeah, yeah. And I'd like to add also, Mr. Chairman, if you could maybe just talk to with the resident. Uh, I don't have a phone number, but I do have an email address that I can forward to you. As long as you two are on the same page, um, you know, I'm fine with, this was with anything. To the east or something. To the east, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, they, they had a bumper crop. My mom's got one of those trees in her backyard, and I cut her grass, and it was hell this, this fall. You know, now those things were all over the place. I've never seen so many. So I understand your neighbor's... Uh, your neighbor's misery there, but <laughs> so, okay. Well, the chair will entertain a motion. The chair will make a motion to approve application number 21020. Do second. we have a sufficient second? Second, please. This is Brill. Thank you. Discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 How many was that? Two? You got me. Three, okay. All opposed say nay. Nay. How many nays do we have, Mr. McIntyre? Just two. Mr. Barley? Just two. Just two? I'll say, I'll say yes, I didn't have to be neighbor. Okay, <laughs> so that's four. We had two nays and we're missing somebody. Anybody want to abstain on this? No? Okay, let's try this again. All in favor say aye. aye. Two. Aye. Five of us, there we go, okay. And opposed? Two. Okay, thank you. All right, in the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, the motion carries. Okay, so congratulations on that. I know you'll work with Chris. Uh, he's going to look into the um, that other property, that project from a few years ago. I need the addresses because I, you know, that could be back when Reedman developed it. You know, that's a long time yeah. ago. Now he'll, he'll be in touch with you on that. All right, but, thank uh, you. 678, 682. Okay. The address. The addresses. I think it was between the rear yard of 147 Oak Mills and the rear yard of 639 Shore Drive. See, I don't own either one of those properties or ever developed those two. We can verify it and get back to that. Probably seven, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. I've been, I haven't been with the town for five, almost six years. Now. Make note of those. Yeah, what was it again? Six. I'm sorry, one more time for Mr. Martin. Those addresses. What's that? You know, someday you'll be my age too and won't be able to hear as well. So. 639 Shore Drive was the complaint. 639? 639 Shore Drive. All right, gentlemen. All right, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Oh, oh, yes, here we go. Sorry. Here you go, thank Baker. you very much. Thank you know you. the drill. You're welcome. We have a motion to it. Enjoy. Happy New Year. Take care. Thank you very much. Thanks. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Borkowski at yeah. uh, 735.
It's almost like. So it's like 35. Yeah. 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 Y